Hey there everybody, the Big T2000 here with a quick intro for this one before we get started. Now first, if you have not heard the first part of the story, stop watching and go watch that video first. There might be spoilers. Maybe. I'm writing this part before I just jump in and write the sequel that I'm surprised everyone wanted for some reason. Now, this surprises me because the story was over. If you play the game, you know this is where the creepy part ends, and you just go to the pirate ship and get the star piece. But if you want a part two, hell, I'll do it for you. And for those of you who keep asking why I use the music the ordinary gamer uses, there are reasons for that. First, I play it on a constant loop when I write, so it sets a mood for it as I write it, and I want you guys to experience the same dread and suspense that I do. Seriously, every ten seconds when I'm writing this crap, I feel like someone's standing right freaking behind me. Secondly, when I watched his videos, I thought this was just the music you were supposed to use, but hell, he hasn't come up and said knock it off, and to be honest, it's creepy as hell, and I love it, so without further ado, Mario RPG Creepy Pasta, Part 2, The Sea. Mario looked back at the frog who was staring at him, his eyes wide and bloodshot. Mario put the book down slowly and started to back away. What, what happened here? Mario asked. What did they do to you? The frog merely stared at him for a few seconds more, and opened the book to the back. You missed a page, the frog said flatly as he handed Mario a folded piece of paper. That's where they go. I found this map in the elder's room. Take it. He won't need it. And neither will I. They will come for me when you leave. Mario tried to calm the frog down, but he just sat back on the bed and stared out the window. They are watching us. I can see the twins from the weapons and armor shop staring at me. They do not look happy. You'd better get a move on. I do not know what the Elder wants with the star piece, but you must not let him have it. Mario slowly walked downstairs, carefully placing the map inside his overalls as the Elder ran up to him. What did that crazy frog tell you? Did he tell you anything? You shouldn't listen to his ramblings. He's crazy. Mario explained the frog was asleep and Mario had only been reading a book the frog had given him before taking a rest. The mayor stood, staring at Mario, a stunned look on his face. He then turned and rushed off to his room and slammed the door. Mario stood, transfixed on the elder's door as he heard the frog's voice from upstairs. You should probably go now. He won't be happy if you're still here. Mario turned and ran from the house. As he passed the weapons and armor shop, he barely noticed the twins staring at him from behind the store window. As Mario left the town and got further and further away, he stopped for a moment and took out the map. He read it carefully and noticed that there was several marks on it and a large red X in the center of the sea. Mario figured that's where the star piece was, that the frog had really been telling the truth, and the elder was just after the star piece like Mario was. He returned the map to his overalls and hurried off to the coast. As he reached the water, Mario noticed the sky beginning to darken as a storm was rolling in. Mario noticed a small boat nearby and jumped in and began rowing out to sea as the storm set upon him. Rain tore through the sky and lightning struck all around him as he finally reached the place marked on the map. As he looked down into the inky black depths of the sea, the water began to swirl around the boat. Mario watched in terror as the oars were ripped from his hands and the boat was swallowed whole by the gaping maw of a gigantic whirlpool that had suddenly formed around him. As Mario screamed, his voice was silenced by the crushing waves and torrents of foam and water. Mario awoke moments later, dripping wet and inside a mysterious room. Mario stood up and noticed he was in a holding cell in what looked like the brig of an old ship. The space around him was dark, only a small amount of light filtered in from the portholes as lightning from outside struck continuously, and a pungent odor of rotting wood filled Mario's nostrils. Mario noticed the bars of his cell were old and rusty, so he was able to free himself rather effortlessly. As he began to explore, he noticed a flight of stairs leading down. He thought about it for a second, then slowly inched down the stairs, his every step echoing off into the empty room with an audible creak. As Mario reached the bottom, he could have sworn he heard something in the room before him, so he slowly moved forward to investigate. What Mario saw, he couldn't believe. Before him, in the adjoining room, was a gigantic shark, walking toward a broken part of the floor where the seawater was setting in a stagnant pool. The shark looked around as Mario ducked behind the doorframe as the shark looked his way. Mario heard a splash, no doubt the shark diving into the water. Mario could have sworn the shark had a hook and was carrying a trident. Mario decided he'd taken on bigger baddies than this old shark, so he dove in the water after him. 
As Mario swam through the frigid water, he saw light shining down from above and saw no sign of the shark. As Mario slowly climbed out of the water, he noticed a door in the far end of the room, slightly ajar. Mario walked towards the door, but before he opened it, he noticed a note stuck to the wall with a knife. He looked closely as the note could barely be read, but he could just make it out. I have managed to seal the beast in the treasure room. He may have sank this ship and stolen all the loot, but I'm happy to escape with my life. If you are reading this, and you care about your life, then I pray you, do not open the door to the treasure room. Mario looked into the dark void beyond the open door and wondered if this was the treasure room. Was the shark the beast the note mentioned? Mario was just curious enough to find out. As he entered the room, he noticed there was a huge hole in the floor, and the room spanned further than Mario could see with the available light. Mario poked around and wondered if the shark had continued on, but with no light, Mario probably wouldn't make it very far in the water with nothing to go on. But as he turned to leave, he heard a small sound of sloshing water, and as he turned, he saw something quickly go under. Mario strained his eyes into the dark depth, but could barely make out what was lurking below. Was it the shark? Was it something else? Or was it nothing? Mario's curiosity was quickly running out. As he shrugged and turned to leave the room, he heard the sloshing noise again, but this time it was closer. He turned and noticed something floating in the water. As he leaned over, holding a nearby railing for balance and peering into the water, as lightning struck outside again, for a split second, it illuminated a giant white tentacle. Mario leaped back, but the tentacle grabbed him and pulled him under. As Mario struggled for breath, he looked down as lightning continued to strike above him. With each flash, his eyes grew wider with terror as he was being dragged down toward a monstrous giant squid. Mario struggled with all his might, but the beast proved too much for him. Before Mario blacked out, the last thing he saw was one giant red eye. Thunderclap! Mario awoke again, this time being dragged down a hallway by more sharks, who were also standing upright. Mario looked back and saw more sharks stabbing the giant squid's flailing tentacles in the room behind him. As Mario regained his composure, one of the sharks spoke to him. What are you doing in our captain's ship? Trying to steal his treasure, are you? Mario tried to speak, but only managed to cough up some water. This one's no threat. The shark laughed as he shoved Mario toward a flight of stairs. Walk! The shark shouted. Our captain wants to see you! Mario climbed the stairs, the sharks laughing behind him. As he reached the top, two more sharks opened the doors for him, and Mario entered a larger room, adorned with gold, jewels, and all manner of pirate treasure. In the center of the room sat the giant shark from earlier. It stared out at Mario, its eyes glazed over in pure white. As Mario stared back into the shark's almost soulless eyes, the shark stood up and thrust its hook at Mario. Trying to steal my treasure, eh? No! Mario shouted. I'm only here to get a star piece I figured was here. I don't want to steal from you, but I really, really need that star piece. The shark stood over Mario, towering over him, looking down and holding its hook up to Mario's face. Mario backed off and the shark laughed. <laughs> You've got a lot of gumption coming all the way down here, almost getting eaten by the giant squid and telling me you're not here to steal, but you are after my treasure. And as the pirate code goes, if you want my treasure, you're gonna have to fight for it! Mario declined as he was in no shape to fight, but the shark lunged and pinned Mario against one of the walls of the room with his hook. Mario winced in pain and looked up as the shark's face was right in front of his, its empty eyes staring right into his. You want my treasure so badly. No one takes Captain Jonathan Jones's treasure! Mario pushed the shark away and jumped to the side as it smashed his hook into the floor. All the commotion called the other sharks into the room. As they tried to intervene, the larger shark called them off. He's mine! The shark shouted. No one crosses the great Jonathan Jones and lives! The sharks formed a circle around Mario as the captain brandished a large trident at him. Mario looked around and noticed in the corner was a warp trampoline, and glowing right above it was the star piece, but it was just out of reach. Mario tried to charge a fireball, but Jones was too quick. He slashed at Mario with his hook, pinning him down, then stabbed downward with a trident. Mario managed to jump away just as the trident smashed through the floor, making a very large hole, leading down to the room below. As the pair battled, Jones continued wrecking the room as Mario was too fast to hit. As the captain stood panting in the center of the room, several large white tentacles began to slowly rise up from the floor. As Mario could smell the rank stench of the squid against the murky salt water, he turned as the tentacles lunged, grabbing everything it could and dragging it underwater. All the sharks went down screaming as the squid began to devour them. Jones looked on in anger and horror as his shipmates were eaten one by one. Then he turned to Mario. 
This is your fault. You did this. You will pay. You will pay! Mario ducked one last time as Jones swung his hook and it stuck fast in the wall. Mario dashed to the star piece, grabbed it, and stood motionless against the wall as the squid once again raised its tentacles and dragged the screaming captain down, still cursing Mario as he was pulled under. Mario looked down into the large hole in the floor, and just before he made a mad dash to the warp, he saw for a split second before it disappeared was one giant red eye. Mario shot out of the water and landed right next to the beach. He turned as he could see the storm getting worse, so he took off for the town again. He had to try to save the frog before it was too late. As he reached the town, he noticed it was empty once again. All the doors were wide open, and many windows were broken, and the buildings were all damaged. Mario hurried to the elder's house, which had had its door ripped from its hinges. He ran up the stairs, and there sat the frog, still staring out the window. Are you alright? What happened? Mario asked frantically. They are waiting for you. The elder told me to tell you. He's waiting for you outside of town. You need to go see the Elder. He knows you have the star. With that, the frog rolled over and closed his eyes, not moving an inch. Mario tried to wake the frog so he could escape, but the frog wouldn't move. Mario sighed heavily and ran out of the house, noticing the frog's diary ripped up on the floor. As Mario left the town, he ran up a small ridge to find the entire population of Seaside Town waiting for him. Mario slowly approached the inhabitants, encircling the Elder. It took you long enough! I could have gotten it myself if I took that long!" The Elder shouted. Now, GIVE ME THE STAR! Why do you want it so badly? Mario shouted back. The Elder began to laugh, slowly, then it grew louder and more maniacal. You really want to know? Well, let me show you something first. Mario slowly began to back away as the deadpan group around the Elder began to walk around him in a circle, faster and faster until they seemed to merge into the Elder. As he continued to laugh, the Elder's head began to stretch. The top grew long and sharp like the blade of a spear. His spine sprouted from his back and grew long and contorted. He screamed loudly as he grew bigger and bigger as more of the people merged with him. His arms grew long, almost bone-like, as did his legs. The Elder finally stopped laughing and screaming as Mario looked up at him. What are you? Mario shouted at the hulking monstrosity. What am I? What are you? Do you call yourself a man? How can you? How can a quivering pile of flesh and bones call itself superior to us? Who am I? Who are we? We are death. We are legion. We are Uniovich! The abomination staggered toward Mario. Its long, bony legs almost looked as if they couldn't support the weight of the creature, but it moved all the same. Mario could only flee as Yardiovich moved closer, but as he tried to run, he saw Yardiovich behind him, but quickly turned back and saw another Yardiovich in front of him. Mario frantically ran as Yardiovich smiled and said under his breath, What a blast! Mario was suddenly blown backwards as the ground beneath him exploded as if a giant geyser exploded underneath him. Mario crashed to the ground in a heap as Yardiovich loomed over him, staring down with its tiny eyes. You... you shall become one of us. You shall dwell inside us, forever. You will make us strong, as we present the star to our master. As we pave the way forward, his genius vision of a perfect world will be realized. But to guarantee that vision, some people must be gotten rid of. People like you. Mario stood up as Yardiovich grabbed him and tried to wrestle the star from his grasp. As they fought, a huge wave crashed over the cliff and dragged Yardiovich off into the sea. Mario struggled to his feet. As he did, he saw Yardiovich swimming back toward him. But as he reached the rocks below, Mario saw a large fin sticking out of the water, quickly heading towards Yardiovich. In a moment, Captain Jones erupted from the water, bit down on Yardiovich's head, and dragged him under. As the wave subsided, Mario stood up and walked back towards Seaside Town. As he passed a large building, he heard knocking on the door. He slowly approached and opened the door as the real inhabitants of Seaside Town suddenly poured out of the building. Everyone cheered as they were all free. The real elder approached Mario and shook his hand. Thank you, brave traveler! You have freed us! said the elder happily. It's okay, it was nothing, Mario said back. Mario pulled the elder aside and explained him what had happened with the frog and Yardiovich. The mayor's face immediately went from happy and cheerful to horrified. Mario followed as the elder tore back to his house. As they reached the top floor, the frog was gone. 
Everything in the room was destroyed, and the only thing left in the room was the remains of the frog's diary, and in large letters sprawled out over all the pages simply read, I am free. <laughs>